Hi everybody, welcome to my first tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be learning our first function, what does it do, and how to use it. So first, we'll need to set up our code editor. So this is how VS Code should look like once you open it. So before you create your file, you need to click here and make sure you have the Python installed on VS Code. So you type in Python, click on Python, and make sure it's Microsoft and install. After you have that installed, click on New File. Then set the language to Python. And then here is where you type in the code. And now I suggest you to create a folder just for our tutorials where all your projects and files will be saved. That's how um, you won't get messed up and lose your projects. So click on Finder, click create a new folder and name your folder. And then now I want this file untitled one to be saved in this folder. So how do I do that? I go on File, Save As, and I navigate to my folder, Python Tutorials, and click on Save. And you could even change the name if you want to Tutorial 1, and then click Save. And then it got saved, and here it shows where your file is. So now if you open the folder, you'll see your file is saved here. Uh, this is a setting I suggest you to turn on. You go on code, settings, type in auto save, and make sure it's on on force change. So what that will do is in s when you type in your code, instead of each time saving it again and again, it'll automatically save the code for you. So here, let's say I type in text and here when you open the file you'll see it got updated I add more and more so it could save you a lot of time so now if you're using repel it this is how repel it should look like after you log in so you click on plus Python name your repel tutorial one and create repel <laughs> and here is where you write the code so this repel doesn't exactly save it on your computer it saves it into your repel it account so when you want to open it you just have to go to your repel it account and open it from there so now let's learn your first function. Your first function will be the print function. So what the print function does, it basically displays text on the terminal. So how do we call the print function? You type in print parentheses quotes. It doesn't matter if it's single quotes or double quotes. And then you write the text, hello world and then here when you run the code you'll see hello world is displayed on the terminal okay so now if you want to display number on numbers on the terminal you don't have to add quotes you could just type in the number without quotes and you run and here the numbers on the terminal if you try writing text without quotes you'll automatically get an error here you see invalid syntax okay so now we'll learn how to do math with the print function so to do math with the print function for example I want to do 10 plus 10 so I type in 10 plus 10 in the print function you don't need quotes because if you do if you add the quotes it won't give you the answer it's just gonna print the question and then when you take off the quotes and you run it gives you the answer 20 
If you try changing it, you can change it to this, run, and 110. And now if you want, you could change it to um, minus 1,000 minus 100, for example. Run, and here, answer is 900. So now about times and division. In Python, you do not write times with the X. In Python, times is the little star, shift 8. So if I try doing 100 times 100, here I run the code and I get the answer 10,000. So now if you want to try doing it with an X, you'll get an error. Invalid syntax. Okay, so now about division. Division is not like we know the colon. It is slash. So now when we run the code, you see one. Okay. So now we'll learn something new. So we'll be learning something that's called variable. So a variable is like a box that stores code that you add. And a variable saves lots of room. So we'll imagine a variable like a box and then you add code. So instead of code, we'll imagine we're putting Lego and toys inside the box. So in code, so in coding, you create a variable like a box, and then inside that box, you add whatever you want to add inside the box. So why does it save a lot of room? Because it because instead of writing the same text, let's say five times, you could type it in one time in the variable and then you just print the variable. I'll show it to you towards the end of this tutorial. So now, how do you call a variable? To call a variable, you will need to create the variable a name. For example, we'll name our variable var. Then add the equal symbol. What, and then you add the function or text you want to add in the variable. So what the equal does, the equal symbol tells the variable all the text or functions that will go after the equal will be inside the box, inside the var, var variable. So let's try it out. Let me show you more into it on the code editor. Let's say I'll call my variable a, slide so rate a equals to the text or function I want to put inside the variable. So now I'll just put text in the variable. So the text I'll put in the variable will be hello world. And now you see if I run the code, nothing will happen because you have to actually call the variable to make the text display on the screen. So basically what it does, it prints all the text that's inside the variable a. So for now, the text that's in the variable a is hello world. So when you try running, you'll see hello world. So let's try changing it to, um, let's say, um, good night. And then I do run and good night. So now, why does it save room? Let's say I want to print hello world in five different rows. So why does it save room? Instead of printing like this, hello, hello world, instead of doing like this five times and running, so I could do it, what I could do is, is I could do a equals hello world and then to make it easier I just print a five times one two three four five then run and hello world five times now we'll learn something interesting with the print function what happens if I do this? Print H plus E plus L plus L plus 
O. So, what would happen, basically, it would take, it will tell the print function, take H, then add to it the E, then add to it L, and then add to it the other L, and then add to it the O. So some of you might think it would print H in the first row, E in the second row, L in the third row, the other L in the fourth row, and O in the fifth row. So you'll see when we run the code, it will print hello in the same row. No difference when I'm doing like this and with adding up. So it doesn't have to be only with letters. I could also do words into sentences. Let's say um, good plus very good plus night plus plus and I do Benjamin and when I run I get a sentence good night Benjamin okay so now I'll just repeat on whenever we learned today so today you learned the print function and what it does you learned how to display text. You learned that numbers don't need quotes because numbers are integer and text are strings. About integer and strings, I'll explain it in a different tutorial. So we also learned how to do math in Python. Let's say 20 plus 10 divided by 3 times 40 minus 80 so when I run let's see the answer is 73.3333333334 and we also learned um, variables let's say var equals wait, var equals hello and then when I run the code, nothing will show up. So I have to actually call the variable. So I do print var. Then I run and hello. Okay. And at the end, we learned how to connect words to sentences or letters to words. Let's say um, hell plus hello hello plus or plus old so when I run the code it will print hello world